Hi, my name is Brenda Bolta and I am a second year Mensi. Um, this piece was inspired um, during a writing session I had with my, men my mentor. She's not here today, but <laughs> okay. Emmy looked in the mirror at her outfit. It must have been the, the hundredth time today. Even though she was so elated with joy, she still knew there was something there was, a t there was something a tiny bit off about her look for the night. Burberry picked my face for the spring ad campaign and their spring fashion line, she thought. I had to look my very best. She had worked so hard to push her modeling career to the very top, and finally, here she was getting ready to attend the party Burberry was hosting to reveal their face for, for their spring collection, which was worth millions of dollars. She looked in the mirror again and still couldn't figure out what exactly was wrong with her look. Her curly hair, her curly jet black hair with blonde highlights were okay. She knew it was not her face because her hazel eyes pressed against her, her fair skin color with her light pink lipstick, with her light pink lipstick, sorry. Her teal short dress with a low back looked perfect, perfectly fitted on her show off. Perfectly fitted on her show off, sorry, and show off her curves and hot legs. Her gold accessories were perfect, and then she paused. The shoes. The black heels she was wearing did not go with her outfit at all. She needed a gold shoe to top the look. Amy started to search around her whole bedroom for a pair of gold heels that she had bought during her photo shoot in West Africa. She had promised herself not to wear them unless it was for a special occasion because they were the most gorgeous shoes she had ever owned. I guess this is the right time, she thought to herself with excitement. Sylvester, her marketing manager, had been right. She remembered what he said as she was stepping, off, as she was stepping out of the plane in Africa for the Burberry shoot. Just do your best, because I am so certain that you will make the face for the spring ad. You have what it takes. When Sylvester told her that, she almost doubted herself thinking about all the other models that would be working hard towards the same goal. She remembers stepping off the plane and hugging Sylvester, saying how much it meant to her. As Emmy departed to the left to walk towards the man that held her name and a card at Charlotte Hotel, and Sylvester departed to the right towards his land, towards his land over, he turned around and shouted to Emmy, try taking a tour around the neighborhood before you leave next week. You'll love what you see. I will, Emmy shouted back with a smile. Emmy remembered it every single day from, the, from that Sunday night she arrived in Africa until she left. She was amazed at how easy she adapted to the African environment. Most of all, all the incredible artifacts she had saw on her tour. Emmy snapped into reality when she heard her text tone from Gertrude, her best friend. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Can you send me the address of the lunch of the lunch again? Gertrude's text read. Emmy replied back with the address and added how she was excited to see her. Emmy started looking around her room again for the heels. She looked behind her white be white and beige curtain, but it wasn't there. She opened up her dark wooden wardrobe and checked the floor where all her shoes laid, and it wasn't there. She checked the drawers of the drawer next to her bed where her pink lamp sat on. It wasn't there. She stood in the, she stood in the center of her of her bedroom on her beige heart-shaped carpet and placed her hands on her hips, tapping her teal-painted nails against her thigh. With a confused face, she wandered her eyes around her room, trying to figure out where she didn't look. Then she hit the side of her head with her palm, thinking, duh, the bed. Why didn't I look under there from the start? She knelt down to the floor and tilted her head down to see if she saw, to see what she saw under the bed. Spotting a shoe box, she smiled and pulled out a black and white shoe box, hoping they were inside. As she opened it, she realized that her shoes were not inside, but instead she spotted another much smaller box that was an off-white color and had a pink ribbon tied to it. Her smile slowly faded. Her, her hazel eyes seemed to look very clear as tears formed in her eyes and she felt a limp in her throat. She identified this box immediately. It was the box her mom gave her when she was nine years old.
She then wished her mom was here to witness the beautiful moment in her life. But Emmy reminded herself that wherever her mother's spirit was, she had been very proud of her. Emmy opened the little small box and looked and took out a gold necklace that was in it. The memory of her mother telling her how it was a special necklace from a special friend and how she should never lose the rush back to her. As she looked at it, she realized it's, it would look very nice with her outfit rather than the one she had on. She gently cleaned the tear that was about to fall from her eye and picked up the jewelry slowly to put it on her neck. As she lifted the jewelry up, she spotted, she stopped and stared with a confused face at the carvings on the necklace. Why do these carvings look so familiar, she thought, especially the carving of a very unique flower that she thought was beautiful. She couldn't seem to place the image in her mind. She looked at the rest of the carvings and slowly started to form an image in her mind of where she saw the carvings. She placed the necklace on her huge white comforter and picked up her iPad that was laying on her black, desk, her black computer desktop. She typed in her password, pressed the Google Chrome icon, and typed in the Woodson Memorial. I knew what she thought what is, with, with a surprise. She looked at the carvers in the Google image of the memorial and that of the necklace and saw that they were the exact same carvings. How can that be, she thought. She remembered her tour guide vividly saying the carvings were very unique and couldn't be found anywhere else. But here they were on her necklace hundreds of miles away. Thank you.